Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to show you how to do forecasting using automated machine learning approach using the MATLAB software. So in recent years, MATLAB has developed several tools. For example, here, if you go to apps and then here you can see several tools that we can use uh, without any major coding. And one of them is this regression learner, so which we can use for modeling several regression type of models for forecasting. So before we had to code a lot for each of the models. And now instead of coding, we can just use this app and forecast using a lot of models by just several clicks, okay. But before we do that, we need to do some preparation. So for example, here you see, I have selected a folder where I have two data files in Excel, okay? So it's always a good idea to create a separate files for your data, okay? And then here in MATLAB also select exactly the same place as your current folder, okay? So then several things becomes easy. When you want to extract data from there, it becomes much easier. But now let me just have a look, what do we have here? So here I have this file forecasting data. So my data looks like this. Here I have date. I have ship order numbers, number of ship orders in that month. Okay, and then number of dead weight tonnage in that month. And then I have uh, Brazil, from Brazil, iron ore export data. Okay, and the values are thousand tons. And then I have China uh, iron ore import data. And here the values are also in thousand tons. And here I have uh, freight rates, okay? And the freight rate is here, it's uh, USD per ton, okay? So now what we are interested in is that we are going to see if using these variables, okay? So these two variables, they kind of indicate the supply of vessels. So here we are talking about capsized vessels, okay? So he, they indicate the supply of vessels here we the, the vessels are cape size bulk carriers okay supply of vessels and then here we have kind of the supply from brazil and here we have the demand from china okay of the iron worry so if the supply and demand variables has an effect on the freight rates okay so that's what we are going to see and by using these four independent variables or explanatory variables we will try to forecast these variable freight rates Okay, so in this case, I'm using a maritime economics context, but for any kind of situations where we have a dependent variable, and then we have several independent variables, one or several independent variables, we can do forecast modeling. Okay, these type of models are the multivariate uh, models, right? So now let's say here we have data uh, up to 1999, but let's say that we are going to use this data as, as our test data. So we will be using data up to 1998, and then we will train a model and using the train model parameter, we are going to forecast this. So I'm just going to take all this data from here and I'm going to put them in a new file, okay? In a new Excel file, I'm going to put them here in the second row, okay? And then I am going to copy the first rows for names. And I'm going to put them here. Okay. Oops. Uh, I'm going to put them here. Actually, we will not also need the, this uh, date variable here. Okay, so I'm going to remove this for now. And we can save it. It is important that these variable names are exactly same as what we have here in the explanatory in the explanatory variable names, okay? That's because when we will be doing the forecast for the freight rates for the later year, then we are going to just put this information and then we will get the forecast as output, okay? So let's see how it works. I'm going to save it and close. And now I am here in my MATLAB. MATLAB is a subscription-based software. Normally you should have excess of MATLAB from your university. Okay, so here I'm at the University of Southeastern Norway and we have access from our university library. Okay, 
So here now, I'm first going to load my data. So there could be several ways of doing it, but I'm just going to click here. I click on home, I go to import data, and then I click on forecasting data. After loading the import data file here, then we get this, okay? And here normally, yeah, it's coming as a table. And we should mention that variable names are on the row one. So the first row would be considered as a variable name. And then we just click here, import selection, okay? And our data was imported here, okay? So now if I go to apps, and then if I go to regression learner, so here, when we have loaded the data already here, then we can just go to new session and select data from workplace. Also, if you have not loaded data before, then you could just load the data here after going to regression app from file. So if I just select the workplace now, then I see that our data is loaded here, okay? And here you can see this response variable. So here you normally have to select the dependent variable. So here my dependent variable is going to be the freight rates, cape, size, uh, I don't know, freight rates. And here you select the independent variables. So here I have the number of orders, that were tonnage, Brazil export, and China import, okay? So here we are not using the date variable. Here we have the cross-validation for. So here normally cross-validation means that it is going to partition the data in several, several uh, buckets, okay? And then it will train the model so that, and then in the, in the end, it will look into the overall uh, average of the forecast accuracy for all these buckets and pick the one that performs better across all these buckets instead of the one that does better in only one of the buckets. Okay, so it's one of the way to ensure um, that the data is not, uh, the model is not going to overfit the data, okay? So normally five folds are good, but I'm going to, let's say, reduce it to three for now, okay? And here, <clears throat> I'm going to then just click start session, okay? And then here we see that we have a model, um, fine tree, which was uh, kind of used here. But now what I'm going to do, I'm going to select here all the models, okay? all available model types, and then I'm going to say train. Now, all the models are going to be implemented and the model with the best performance will be highlighted, okay? And here we are having the performance accuracy measures is RMSC. So let's see. So far, this one is the best. So here, when we see that we have found the best model, if we click here, then the best model predictions are highlighted here, okay? If you click to another one, then it will give you the prediction of that model. And here you can see the yellow, yellow, yellow indicates predicted and blue indicates true value, okay? And then if you click here, you will get this actual uh, versus predicted plot. So what does this line mean? So look here, true response and predicted response, okay? So here for true response, if we had a value, eight, and also the predicted value where the model was eight, then it would fall here, right? In this intersection, okay? Similarly, when we have a true response, you know, true data, if it was a uh, value of seven for the freight rate, and our predicted value was also seven, that it would fall exactly here. So if our data was forecasting our model exactly perfectly, then all these values would fall exactly on this line, okay? But which is not the case here, which is often uh, which is rarely the case, okay? So here we see that our values, these true versus predicted plots, they are kind of uh, dispersed around this line, okay? So it looks okay, it's not too bad, but it's not also very good either, okay? If it was excellent model, it, the values would be more on this line. The, these blue dots, they'll be more on this line, okay? Now, if I click here, we can also see the residual plot. So here, what we see that is that for our values, for in for the increase of our values, the freight rates, if our how our residuals forecast errors, how our forecast errors behave. Okay, so normally the perfect would be that if our residuals are zero, right? So if our forecast errors are zero, that means we could 
our model could forecast the values perfectly. So here we see something interesting. Values below eight here, we see actually for them, our forecast was actually, it was over forecasting. So we have negative errors, negative values, negative error values, negative residual values, okay? But then for eight to 11 here, we see that uh, our values are pretty close for actually for freight rate of eight, nine, and 10, we see our forecast are our pretty good. Our, our errors are almost zero. It's close to the line of zero, right? And then when we have a, again 11, then it becomes a bit higher than our uh, residual of zero. So here it means we are under forecasting. So that's why we have positive residual values. Our forecasted values are lower than our actual values. So when we take actual minus forecast, then it was actually lower. The forecasted values were lower. So that's how we normally interpret these figures, okay? So now we are going to look into how to export this model and use that for forecasting the unknown future. So now let's say if we want to export the model for future forecasting. So I'm going to export the compact model and we are going to call it train model. That's okay. So here we see that we have now this window. And using this information here, we can actually make some forecast, okay? So one of the good ideas, so we are going to forecast using this data, test data, whatever we have in the test file, okay? So there we have put the data for the next year, okay? So that's what we're gonna use for, so these are the variables, but we don't have the, we actually also have the OR rates. We should actually remove this from here, the OR rates. We are going to remove the OR rates. I did not notice that we have them already there. So we have mainly four predictor variables. So we use them, okay? And then we are going to use this for forecasting. And here we are going to say, let's say we, we, we try to load it here and we define it as a uh, table. Uh, we, we call a table T. So then we say read table. Test dot mat lab dot x l s x. So it has to exactly match what we have here, okay, in the file name. And then enter. And then actually we can use just this command here, y fit. Okay, so if I just copy it and paste it here, because we have already defined t as our uh, test data. So if we just use this, okay. And then if I press enter, so these are my forecasted values for the next 12 months. Okay. So that's how we get forecast uh, from MATLAB. Now, sometimes if you're doing a forecast in the future of which you do not know the data, okay. So let's say you are going to forecast another 12 months, okay, for which you do not know these data, the values of the explanatory variable. Then what do you do? One good idea would be to do a forecasting of those using a univariate regression model or autoregressive model, okay? So you use, you forecast those for 12 months and then use those forecasted values to forecast the freight rates, the dependent variable using the same approach that we have seen, okay? Thank you for listening. I hope you find it useful. Good luck.